Hi, my name is Steve Rahi. I'm a cloud solutions architect specializing in management technologies. Today's discussion will be a continuation of our session looking at uh, software distribution options in Intune. The first uh, discussion was really kind of considering the config manager options and then talking about how you can implement similar in Intune. And this session will be a bit of a deeper dive. It will be 100% demo, except for this portion of it, uh, to kind of dig into Intune and not only just talk about the comparison, but to show you the ways that you can do certain things in Intune. Now, when it comes to software distribution in Intune, of course, we uh, support Windows, iOS, Android, etc. So I'm, I'm not going to really go over the iOS and Android part of software distribution. I'm going to really focus on Windows, but once you kind of understand Windows, then uh, iOS and Android pretty easy to follow, right? So uh, that said, let's just kind of jump into uh, the demo and uh, we will get started. So here's Intune. And if I'm going to go do software distribution, uh, then I'm going to go over to apps here, right? Now, the first place that I want to uh, show you is I can go directly and go to all apps, right? And I will. And then I could go create any app that I want, right? So I can say click add, select app type. And what you'll see is just a listing of all of the different types of apps that we can deploy for all of the supported platforms that we have, which is fine. You can use that all day, but it might be a better option for you. If you're a Windows admin, for example, go on to the next level and choose Windows. And that way, whenever you click add, right, the only options that you see in the list are those that apply to Windows. And the same kind of filtering context applies if you were to choose iOS or Android or Mac OS or whatever else. We will just show you the pieces uh, that apply to you, right? Okay, so we'll stay in this context. Now, I want to show you all of the different options under here. I'll, I'm going to talk about each one with the goal of um, helping you understand options. This is not going to be exhaustive for every single scenario. There are a couple of hot button kind of topics that I'll raise as we go through. But uh, generally what I would say is uh, if you have a particular deployment need, you likely can solve it with Intune. Now, the path to solve it may not be uh, immediately obvious, right? And, and also, as you look at the options I'm about to show you, what you're going to notice is that there are differences. So I want to kind of address that a little bit up front. I talked in the other session about how in, in the Intune solution, uh, Intune is an MDM management platform, right? Absolutely. And MDM is built into the OS. That's true for iOS. It's true for Android, et cetera. And the capabilities that we can bring to bear through MDM uh, are those that are available by the platform developers, right? But there are some scenarios where customers need additional options, something that is not supported by MDM natively, right? And so in those scenarios, we do have additions on Windows and Mac OS specifically, uh, and in, in Windows, it's called the Intune Management Extension, similar thing. I forget the exact name of it for Mac OS. But this management extension adds some additional capabilities, right? And so I'm going to say about it, but as we get to certain uh, application deployment mechanisms, uh, you're going to see some options that are unique there. And you might wonder, well, why don't we just extend those across to everything, right? And the answer uh, the answer is it's a good idea. We probably could, but um, the MDM channel is not capable uh, today of doing the kinds of things that, that you will see, right? Uh, anyway, to, not to believe in the port, but when you see the differences, uh, you will understand. And the last thing I'll say largely, the things that you do by MDM is is everything except Win32 apps. Uh, there's some line of business stuff. 
and um, also, you know, uh, PowerShell scripts and so on, right? But the rest of it's all in the end. Anyway, let's just start from the beginning, right? Up at the top. So the goal of this session, again, is to demo, to walk through, to show you how you would go create some options, right? In the spirit of, you know, what can you do with Config Manager? What can you do with Intune? Um, and also, uh, one thing I'll just state up front, right? We're going to spend all of our time in Intune today. But one thing I'll state up front, right? Uh, all, I won't say all, you can never say uh, never, but... Uh, development efforts these days are not going into Config Manager. Yeah, we're going to keep Config Manager relevant and current and supported and so on, but uh, new features, new capabilities are really going to be slated primarily for Intune. And you see that with the first one here, right, Windows Store. And so if you have a need to deploy Windows Store apps, you can do it. Uh, or historically, you could do it with Config Manager and Intune, right? Um, that's the legacy option you see on your screen for Microsoft Store apps. But the new Windows Store, that is only something you can uh, deploy from using Intune. There's no support at all for deploying new Windows Store apps with Config Manager. And I believe, I haven't looked, I've forgotten to look, but I believe the old Windows Store, the legacy Windows Store, is... Uh, I know it's deprecated. I think it's out of support at this stage, but I uh, can't totally remember. But either way, it is deprecated. Right? So moving forward, you should be focusing on the new Windows Store uh, capabilities if you want to deploy apps. And that's only available in Intune. Right? You can achieve what you need on your Windows devices if you have co-management, right? but it's going to come from Intune. Right, so let's look at that first. So if we have a store app that we want to configure, first there's going to be a link where you can learn about uh, deploying apps. And then I can click uh, Select. And I'm going to be given an option here to go browse the Windows Store and look for whatever app I want. So I'll just type in Microsoft, and then we'll see the apps that are available when I filter. So you can choose whatever search term you want. And I'll just choose one at random here. It's fine. And hit select. And then I'm going to get the metadata uh, here that is provided by the app. Now, you can edit some of this. Some of it you can't. Um, install behavior, system user, categories, whatever. Whether to show this as a featured app in the company portal, et cetera, et cetera. You can add some notes, owner, you know, whatever. Uh, and that's really it, right? We know how to deploy uh, store apps. And so we have the metadata. You can uh, tweak it. We can move on. You can apply uh, scope tags. You can apply uh, assignments, right? But those are all, both scope tags and assignments really are outside of the scope of software deployment. We've talked about assignments when we talked about groups. We've talked about using filters. Right? I'm not going to go back over that here. Uh, really, what you care about is the app information and then the targeting, and you're done, right? So that's pretty easy. You just browse for the store app, you supply the information, and you target it to whatever uh, audience of devices that you care about, and we're good. So uh, enough about that. So what's the next type? So M365. So we have uh, – both of these are really similar. We have deploying M365, the Office apps, deploying Edge. Here's – Another example, right, we do have options in Config Manager where you can deploy Office, right? We have options in Config Manager where you can deploy Edge. But uh, if you're going to be doing those things, the idea is Intune will give you a good, seamless experience for that. So it's really wizard-based, pretty simple, just a couple of choices. Let's pick M365. Again, a link to learn more. And then I can select, and it's going to give me some metadata here, right? So uh, here's just the app suite information and some of the metadata you want. But then you can get specific here to tell us exactly how you want to configure things. So notice here I have two options. I can, if I want to, uh, take an XML blob that I've created 
with the Office Customization Tool and drop it in here and let that drive the deployment of Office. And perfectly valid thing to do. Maybe you want to in your deployment scenario, but if you uh, have the options you need, you prefer to use the, the GUI here, which is easier, right? Then we do give you the choice, of, okay, what do you want to deploy, right? Do you want to deploy everything or do you want to uh, deselect a few? Uh, any additional things that you might want to add to your deployment, right? App suite information, what architecture do I care about? What is my default file format? What is my update channel that I want to use? And once you have all that configured, some of the properties, right? Then you click next and go forward. And, uh, well, I've got to select one, whatever. You go forward and you have your scope tags and assignments. And again, that's it. Wizard-based, pretty easy. We have the software. We know how to deploy it. It's available. All you need to do is configure how you want it to flow down. Uh, and we're good. Uh, another one similar experience would be Edge, right? So if I want to look at Edge, then I can select, here's the metadata. Uh, I can go define my app settings, and that would be largely what channel, and then uh, operating system language to use, you know, whatever, and that's it, right? So really easy UI. And then you deploy it out, uh, and you're good. Right now, some of the, the choices, I'll just go ahead and say this, some of the choices folks that are coming from Config Manager might be interested in, might wonder how they would do, are things like maintenance windows, right? Things like specific targeting times and so on. Everything you've seen so far, uh, well, I say that, let me, let me not just uh, go forward here, let me go back. Or I'll stay here and then I'll go back, right? So I've shown you three. Let's just go back and review because I forgot to do one thing. I'm going to click next. Don't care about scope tags, but I do want to add uh, a group. What group I add doesn't matter, but I wanted to show you the options. There are some options in some places that you will want to know about on the assignments section that will be relevant to how the app deploys. So this is... Uh, your edge experience, and you don't have anything really except for being able to add a filter, which uh, is is something that you really consider uh, along with the group that you're targeting. You do have uninstall support uh, if you want it right from here, but these are your options, right? Let me go back and show you uh, for M365, M365. So let me go forward. I'll just choose a couple of channels, whatever. Go forward, scope tags. And now here are, um, again, my options. So you're seeing filter mode filter, right? So just, just to show you the complete picture of what's going on, let me show you this one now. So uh, store. I'll just pick one again randomly. Let's do that one. All right. And then uh, click next and click next. I'm going to add devices. Now, notice we have some differences now. So depending on what you're deploying, you're going to have choices to uh, as to how you install, right? So in user notifications, install deadline, restart grace period, all of these are additional options that did not show up for Edge, did not show up for M365, do show up for store apps, and you'll see them again uh, and another one here in just a minute as we continue through the app types. If you click on end user notification or installation deadline or restart grace period, it all brings up the same window where you can uh, do your app settings here to uh, define how Toast notifications will interact, what time zone format, when you want to install it at a specific date and time is an option here, right? So I mentioned there are some things that as a Config Manager admin, you may be accustomed to doing that you can 
not do in some cases with Intune. You can maybe get at with Intune. So the precise ability to schedule a, a start time for the install is something you can do all day long with Config Manager. Um, you can't do it on every type of deployment in Intune, but you can for some of them. So I'm showing you that here, right, for store apps, that you can do that uh, with Intune, right? Um, anyway, so you'll see some more as we go along uh, to the rest of them. So I wanted to show you that because I'd forgotten to. Okay, so let's just continue on down the the list of choices. So we've done all of these. Now there's there's web uh, Windows Web Link, and there's also just a generic Web Link. Both of these basically do the same thing. But if I have a, a, a web app that I want to deploy, you know, think about a uh, maybe a a browser based application that you your users would go to a, a URL shortcut to access, you know, whatever that is, um, then this is a way to deploy a link to that uh, to that URL to your users, right? Pretty easy to do. Uh, here's just the metadata I can use. I have to supply uh, the name, blah, 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 description, and I do need the app URL, so I will just say, oh, let's just do this. And this is silly, but you get the idea. There, right? So I can deploy Bing to users. I can deploy Google. If there's a, a particular hotel chain that your organization uses and you want to give users a shortcut, you can do that. If, you know, whatever it is that's web-based, you can provide a shortcut to that app using web links. And, and that's nice because if something modifies on the app where there's a new version or the URL changes or you want to direct them to a specific location uh, embedded in the URL, you can, right? And then uh, same thing from here, you, uh, well, whatever, let's give it a name. Same thing from here, you can supply your assignment information and again, you see the choices you have are only filter, right? Uh, okay. So let's keep rolling. All right, so I'm not going to show both of these because really they're the same. Now, the last three, uh, let's talk about. So line of business app. So we'll click on that. And what you'll see right here is when we call it line of business app, what kind of app are we really deploying. And for Windows, we see it's AppX, AppX Bundle, MSI, whatever. This is also a good place to bring up uh, something that that's important, right? So if you're deploying an app with Intune, then there are certain places that you might think to go for deploying that given app. Uh, in the case of an MSI, you would think of coming to line of business, and that would be absolutely appropriate for uh, many deployments of a line of business app, an MSI, whatever. But in some cases, uh, I'll give you one specific in a minute, uh, you can't use, your, you may not be able to use a line of business app option to deploy your MSI. All right, let me show you what I mean. So let me hit select, and I'm going to go browse to an MSI file. Uh, doo -doo -doo, where is it? Computer, hemp, rich copy. Here's, here's an MSI, right? So we're going to read off of that MSI. I can deploy a rich copy just fine uh, with the line of business app. But let me show you where you might run into something. And this specific example would be one that I ran into with deploying the Config Manager client, right? Because if you deploy the Config Manager client via Intune or GPO, in both of those cases, you will use the CCM setup.msi. That's really the only place you will use the CCM setup.msi, but you will need to use it with Intune. So one would think, 
let's set up a line of business app to do that in Intune, which makes a lot of sense, right? And you probably will be just fine, but you could run into a scenario, let me create it for you. You could run into a scenario where, watch. Have I gotten there yet? Nope. Should get there soon. Come on. There. Right? The command line length is 1024 characters. Well, you, if you have an MSI, like CC McSec, um, typically your any any command line arguments that you need would be satisfied within the, the space of 1,024 characters. But that may not be the case, right? So in the case of deploying the Config Manager client, in the one scenario where I exceeded the 1024 character limit, I was using the command line switch um, for the, uh, the bulk registration token. Well, if you've used that command line switch, you know that is quite the lengthy uh, uh, list of characters to describe the bulk registration token, and it, you couldn't do it within the field length for the line of business app. So uh, we ended up switching over and using Win32 apps to do it, calling a PowerShell script, having that PowerShell script call CCM setup, and it was fine, and we, we worked around it that way. My whole point in telling you this is uh, that don't just if you run into a roadblock deploying an app in the way that you might think would be the prescribed way to do it, like an MSI would be a line of business app, Right? That doesn't mean that you're done. You do have other options like Win32 that you could consider to get the deployment done. Right. The other th reason that I'll tell you this, and, and this one is now taken care of, but whenever I first ran into that issue, it was a while ago, and there was no error for command line length in the UI. We've added that, right? But back then, I could put in as many characters as I want, hit OK, we would save it, and then whenever I went to you know, do the assignment and save everything, I would get an error. And the error was very cryptic, didn't say anything about command line length and so on. That's resolved now, but uh, just by process of you know, working on a few things, I realized, oh, it's really command line length that we're talking about here. Anyway, probably you won't run into that a lot, but if you do, just wanted to call out, there are multiple ways to do a deployment uh, in some scenarios where it doesn't fit perfectly into the model. Right? Okay, uh, let's click next. Yeah. Good enough. There. Good enough. Oh, come on. There. Okay, so we can then go choose our groups. And you'll see that we have uh, and another option here, install context. Now, again, just to call your attention to this, right? There are options to configure the app deployment uh, or, or the way the app deploys, but not all of them are going to be prior to the assignment stage. So pay attention at the assignment stage, and there could be some additional options that could help you. So here, again, you have the ability... Uh, if it's available to set the install context and and so forth, right? Anyway, so that's line of business app. One that is going to be most familiar and comfortable to you if you're a config manager admin moving over uh, and, and looking at Intune is Win32, right? Here, we're going to deploy a Win32 app. Now, what could that be? It could be an app with a dot exe extension, it could be a script, a PowerShell script, a batch file, whatever, right? And if you're going to deploy a script, then basically the sky's the limit. You could uh, deploy the script, and then from within the script, call whatever install you want to, right? And so this is, in my mind, the most flexible uh, mechanism for deploying apps in Intune. Uh, this one is made possible because it uses the Intune management extension, which can support some of these additional options. So let's just go through. So I'm going to select uh, a file. 
All right, and let's go find rich copy again here. Okay. Oops, sorry. I forgot to mention one thing. So when you deploy a Win32 app, critical piece that I forgot to mention, right? You might think, oh, let's go browse to the EXE I want to deploy. Let's go browse to the MSI that I want to deploy. Let's go browse to the script that I want to deploy, whatever. That's not the way it works, right? If you want to deploy an XE or a script or whatever, right, you can. But you have to get it into a format that Intune can understand. And look right here, Intune win. So you have to convert your uh, your software into an Intune win file. And then you can deploy it out, no problem. Well, so one thing to think about, let me show you how to use Intune Win real quick. Uh, let's see, let me go to the command prompt. So there's a, a utility that we offer, let's go uh, desktop, right, uh, called Intune, where is it? The uh, Intune Win app util, right? So you can download that from GitHub. With this utility, you would basically point at your source directory and then uh, XE and answer some questions and we will package up the uh, the file for you. So let me just walk through this with you really easy. It's going to ask us for a source directory. Oops. Well, I say it's really easy. If you type it correctly, it will be really easy here. Uh, backslash temp. Uh, what is my directory? Rich copy. And then rich copies. Uh, or set it back. Okay, good enough. So rich copy. Oops, come on. So I'm just giving it the source folder. So I'm going to take it there, then the setup file, there, and then uh, output. Folder, and then uh, the output file already exists. Yeah, I'm going to override it. That's fine. If I have any catalog files, uh, I can include them. I'm not going to. And then off we go. Intune Win will go through and build everything that's needed to deploy that. Now, <clears throat> all good. Now I have an Intune win that I can upload into Intune. I'll show you that in a minute. But a little bit of commentary before I do. You just saw me do that. Now, if you have something that you're going to deploy and it changes frequently, then you may not want to have to go through and manually do Intune win, even though it's easy over and over and over again. If you're testing something, you may not want to have to rebuild Intune Win over and over and over again. So one trick that I've used that is very useful is if you're going to be deploying something, like whenever I deployed the Config Manager client through uh, a Win32 app using a script, right? Then I'm just going to build a script that is going to look... Uh, well, I have two choices. I can build a script that has everything in it <clears throat> that I need to deploy in my scenario, including all command line switches, everything, right? And if anything changes in that process, I'm going to have to rebuild my Intune Win to accommodate the changes. Or I can build my script to reach out externally and grab all of the detail information that it needs and store them as variables and then continue. So if I am in that scenario, then all I need to do is make adjustments to my external file and I don't have to repackage every single time. And when the script runs, it's going to go out and retrieve that stuff and know what to do, right? Just different philosophies. Both work just trying to make your life a little bit easier in testing and in production in certain cases. Either way, we have our... Intune Win, all right? Easy to do. So I'm going to go browse for that. And uh, here, temp, I've got it created right here. Good enough. 
Okay. Now, there's various options. One option that you have here is uh, on the next screen. Metadata. Here's uh, some more information. Oh, come on. Okay, good enough. Right. Uh, here's my install command. I'm just going to put in bogus information here because uh, here. Because I don't really care to save this. Good enough. Here is one that you have not seen in any other format so far. Installation time. How much time does this require to install? Right? 60 minutes by default. You can adjust it, should adjust it to whatever is realistic. Now, I mentioned that you do not have an option for maintenance windows in Intune. There is no such thing, right? That's true. But you've already seen with um, other apps, uh, specifically store apps that I can deploy, that there is the ability in some cases to set an installation start time, a specific installation start time, right? You can do that with Win32 apps. And so when you have the option to set a specific start time, and then you also have the option to set a maximum runtime or the runtime for the app, then by cobbling those two together, you can get at a maintenance window. It's not a traditional maintenance window, but it can simulate and kind of build one on the fly. And so as you're thinking through, your deployment scenarios, then think through the different ways that you need to uh, target the application deployment, what groups you need to use, how those groups will be organized, what their requirements are, what their start times are, right? And then you can largely meet your requirements with these options, right? Okay, so just to share that. Uh, and then the rest of these are going to be familiar, especially if you've worked with the application model, Allow available, what is your install behavior, what are our return codes, here's our restart behavior options that we can add. Uh, here, there's going to be requirements, so we can use any of these, just like we can in the Config Manager app model, we can use any of these to uh, specify requirements in order to install, right? Uh, if we want something besides what's up here, then we can add those and you'll see the options are file registry and script with script you can use anything for a requirements option you know x must exist or be satisfied before this is able to install so you can do uh that right um okay then oh come on gotta choose something good enough so click next Another thing, detection rules. So you do need to specify a detection rule. Is the app installed? So using a custom script, configure detection rules manually, you know, whatever. And so you can see the same kind of thing. So I can use an MSI file registry. So I'll just use a file. The path is going to be uh, here, here. And I'll call it bogus, All right? Good enough detection method uh, exists. And that's good. So I've got my detection rule, bogus that it, though it is. Uh, I don't have to add dependencies. Here where, here's where you can, that there needs to be another program in place first before this one can install, All right? So you can choose that if you want to. Uh, next. Uh, supersedence. If this app is going to supersede another app, you can define it here. And that's it. So all of this should be, again, very familiar to the Config Manager app model if you've used it. Then we have scope tags. And then here, notice, uh, we're going to be able to add our groups. And we have additional options over here. Right. So uh, here we have the most. Right. So we have availability and installation deadline, as well as delivery optimization, right? So again, if you click any one of these, it brings up all of them. So let's just choose. 
So here's where we can uh, deal with our toast notifications. Here's where we can define delivery optimization. So in the context of you know, delivery optimization, just a quick mention, delivery optimization is its own, to own topic, but uh, very often from Config Manager, uh, folks will be using something like 1E Nomad or Adaptiva to uh, help ease the load on the network, right? Neither of those products have any bearing at all in the Intune world. So, but we do need uh, the delivery optimization options, and that is going, or sorry, the content optimization options, and that can be given to you by delivery optimization. So definitely set that up if you need to. Here's where you can configure how you will use it and so on. And then uh, time zone, how you want the app to be available, uh, when you want it to run, you know, et cetera. So this gives you absolutely the most options of anything uh, that you can choose from, right? Okay. Last one. So if we click add, you may not have this in your tenant. I have it in mine, enterprise app catalog. So not going to go into this a great deal, except to say that there are certain apps that vendors have given to us to help package up so that it's easier for you to deploy them. And you can browse the app catalog. You can see all of you know, who they are, who the publisher is, whatever. If your app is in this list, then you can, you can click it and we will have it already configured for deployment. You can add, uh, or, or there, there's mechanisms where apps can be added to this list. If there's a vendor you work with and you want that to happen, then there's processes, right? So just as an example, I'll just click on one. Doesn't really matter which one I choose, but I'll click on it and click next and select it. And you'll see that we have, you know, all of this pre-configured for you. Uh, it is all set up in the in the the Win32 app model that you don't have to configure. It's already in. You can see how everything's defined. We have the software for you already. You don't have to upload anything. Uh, you do need to make sure your licensing is in place and so on. But it's all there, right? So anyway. Right, that's what I wanted to show you today. That's it for Windows apps. And there are similar uh, options that, again, you can go through and, and navigate without a problem yourself for iOS, for Android, whatever. But a little bit more of a deeper dive. wanted to see or show you how you would work through these, what your options are, uh, the various constructs, maybe some considerations to think of as you're moving over there. Uh, the best way to get involved and truly really answer the question, can I do X? with Intune is to go try it, right? And the answer is most likely, yeah, there's a way to get something done, you know, in Intune. One last thing that I'll share with you that uh, that I ran into as well with, with a customer question is, you know, like in Config Manager, there's a way to do phased deployments where you can control the rollout of, you know, who gets the deployment at what point. There is no built-in equivalent phase deployments in Intune. But does that mean you can't do it? No, you can do it. Uh, absolutely. There's a number of ways that I can think of that you could approach it. One way that I've thought about with some customers is to uh, leverage our programmatic interface via Graph API uh, and some key flags, maybe in descriptions of apps and different things to kind of uh, indicate uh, whatever deployment pathway should be followed and then let that automation uh, kind of kick in and help you follow that deployment pathway. I won't dig into the thought further from there, but just to say, if you don't see it immediately when it is, when you look at it and you have a need, don't just give up. Kick the tires a bit. There very likely is a way to get what you need done. And with that said, we will uh, wrap this session and we will continue this this discussion and see you next time.